Thanks for joining me on another photo analysis video. Today we are going to travel back in time to Tittenhurst Park, located off London Road at Beggar's Bush near Ascot and over the parish border into Sunningdale, both in the English county of Berkshire. This photo was taken above Tittenhurst Park around 2017. But I'm mainly going to focus on the placement of structures and gardens as they were at the time that John Lennon lived there, since that is what most people watching this are interested in. Now as you likely know, this was the location of the Beatles' last official photo shoot on August 22, 1969. But there's a lot more to it than that. Its history actually goes back centuries, including the present house which was first built in 1737, with some changes and additions being made around 1830 and into and throughout the 20th century. The property was owned by patent medicine vendor Thomas Holloway, as well as Peter Cadbury. Yes, that Cadbury. Chocolate people. And of course, John Lennon and then Ringo Starr. Now, Ringo Starr acquired the property from John Lennon after Lennon moved to New York City. And for quite a while, Ringo rented out the house and the studios to assorted musicians such as, and this is pretty cool stuff here, White Snake, Def Leppard, and Judas Priest. And Slade even stayed there for a while working on some songs. Oh, and Squeeze, they recorded two music videos there. If you watch Up the Junction, that was shot in John Lennon's kitchen. You could even see the cool stainless steel appliances. And also Cool for Cats. That was shot in the Cape Dutch Cottage. So check out those videos when you get a chance. Squeeze is awesome. All those bands are. Anyway, the amount of property associated with the estate has changed over the course of time. But for the most part, it's usually assumed to have been roughly 72 acres in 1969. Now, the entry to the estate was located on the northwest side of the property. And once you pass through the entry gate, there's a guest house to the right. And that is where John Lennon's chauffeur used to live. Next to that is a series of garages around a courtyard, and those were actually stables in the 1800s. To the south of the garage is a building that was referred to as the Terra... Shh, I'm recording. Go play somewhere. Now that's on the recording forever. I hope you're happy. To the south of the garage is a building that was referred to as the Terrace Cottages and also as Forge Cottages. That is the red, br <laughs> that is the red brick building where the Beatles were photographed together. You know, what are people going to think? What are they going to think? That I don't give my cat any attention. Let me finish and then we will play. And I'm not going to edit this out because I want people to see what I have to deal with in life. Okay. As I was saying, there are four units in the building where blacksmiths used to live who worked in the forge in the 19th century. Upstairs were the bedrooms, and in each unit down below, there was a kitchen and a living space. In 1969, John Lennon invited Krishna devotees to live there, so that way they could have a place to stay while in England, and also to help maintain the property. Where it has it, that was George Harrison's initial suggestion. To the east of the Forge Cottages is a path known as the Wibbly Wobbly Way. Now to the south was a building that was built in the 1800s that was called the Cape Dutch Cottage. But John Lennon called it the Temple after he allowed Krishna devotees to worship there. Beatles fans know this building. It was featured in a photo of them for the Hey Jude album. And that is the location of the Georgian Mansion. Now I'm going to discuss that in more detail in a future photo analysis video, but for now, this is the location of the north side of the mansion, which was the entry where John and Yoko had the glass engraved with the words, this is not here. It was on the southwest side of the house where Lennon built his recording studio, and it's there where he recorded his Imagine album. And as you can see, a little bit, the property descends down from here, and at the bottom was the location of the swimming pool. After Ringo sold the estate, the swimming pool was redesigned and enclosed in bulletproof, and some say bomb-proof, glass. And over here you can see the location of the tennis courts. Okay, now let's head over to another direction. This right over here is the location of a path along the east side of the mansion, and on either side there used to be really beautiful formal gardens in the 1800s. And when John Lennon owned the estate, this area was overgrown with grass and it was graveled. And over here is the location of the 19th century statue of Diana standing in the center of a pond. And this over here is the location of the Keeper's Cottage. It's also known as the Mock Tudor Cottage. And guests of John Lennon have stayed there. 
After Ringo acquired the property, his son Zach and his wife and child moved into this house. And there are at least two promotional films that Ringo made that used the exterior of the Keeper's Cottage as a setting. For a while, the Sgt. Pepper caravan that John Lennon had purchased for Julian was parked on the grass outside of this building. And unfortunately, it slowly deteriorated from all the exposure to the elements. It was later restored a little bit by Ringo, and then it was moved over to the swimming pool where it was used as a sort of cabana. And here's the man-made lake. And this is, you know, as it appears today. After Ringo sold the estate to the president of the United Arab Emirates, the lake was expanded quite a bit. And you can even see over here, there's a lake house that was built where the new owner would have meetings. Now, the portion that John Lennon had built was roughly over here. And this area was a large cricket pitch that was overgrown with tall grass when owned by John Lennon and then Ringo. In the 1800s, this area was filled with greenhouses, and there was also a walled garden. When Ringo owned Tintenhurst Park, this area became a very active nursery that generated revenue selling plants and trees. And this is a really interesting circular-shaped garden that was created in the 1990s. So this was never here when John Lennon owned it or Ringo. But it gives you an idea of how much property this was. I mean, this garden is obviously enormous. And also at the far end of the property is the location of the Sunningdale Cemetery. So as you can see, this was and remains quite a bit of land. And why on earth John Lennon made the decision to sell this incredible estate in such a magnificent location is anyone's guess. And of course, we could all wonder how things would have turned out for him had he kept it and simply went back and forth to London and New York and anywhere else in the world that he wanted to go and return to this beautiful estate. But as we know, that did not happen. And so this concludes this photo analysis of an image taken above Tittenhurst Park. If you have any thoughts about this subject matter, please put them in the comments below and share what's on your mind. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You could also go on Amazon or any other bookseller and order some of the books that I've written about Tittenhurst Park. I do look forward to you joining me again for another photo analysis video. So until next time, I wish you safe travels and all your journeys.